This video clip is part of the EPFL introductory course on information, computing, and communication. Following an introductory clip on computer networking, this is the second in a series of clips on that subject. It discusses the fundamental notion of protocol layering. The operation of a network does not depend on just one protocol. On the contrary, any network invariably involves a multiplicity of protocols, and these protocols are layered on top of one another, each layer providing a different, higher level of abstraction. To illustrate this layering and show the different levels of abstraction, let us consider the well-known case of a plain telephone network. The highest level of communication in a telephone network is the conversation between the involved parties, which we will call Alice and Bob in this example. This conversation is the application for which telephone networks are meant. For this application to work, the only protocol that Alice and Bob need to agree on is to use a common natural language, such as English, for instance, for their discourse. They also need to have the courtesy of not speaking both at the same time so each can hear the other one when he or she talks. Computer networks also carry different applications, such as the web or email, which also require their own protocols. We will get back to that later. The telephone conversation between Alice and Bob does, however, not travel directly between them. Each of them has to have a telephone set, and there has to be a telephone connection between the two devices to carry the conversation electronically between them. In other words, there is a system for transporting the application layer conversation protocol between the two telephone sets of Alice and Bob. The same is true in computer networks, where there is also a so-called transport protocol between computers to carry information between the applications running on those computers. Now, even the telephone connection between Alice and Bob's devices cannot and does not link them directly with one another. This connection in practice travels through a number of telephone switches on the way between Alice and Bob, including local antennas in the case of mobile phones. For the root of this connection to be established through the possibly global telephone network, a networking protocol is necessary for all the switches to be able to agree on and compute a meaningful path for the connection to travel over. The same is again true in computer networks, where a so-called network layer protocol is required to properly convey information between computers at both ends of the network. Now, for all these switches and antennas to be able to agree on and compute routes or paths through the network layer, they of course need to be able to talk to their immediate neighbors using some direct communication protocol. Both telephone sets in particular need a protocol to communicate with their respective antennas. Antennas need to talk to switches, and switches need to be able to talk to one another. Again, the same is true in computer networks, where each computer needs so-called link layer protocols to communicate with its immediate neighbors. Then again, telephone sets, antennas, and switches may be connected through very different, diff different physical media, twisted copper wires, coaxial cables, waveguides, or any of a number of other wireless means. In fact, Alice and Bob are connected to their respective telephone sets through a physical user interfaces comprising a screen and a keypad. For two directly connected devices, such as a phone set and its local antenna, or an antenna and a phone switch, or two phone switches, to be able to communicate to all, they must be connected using some common physical medium. This is equally true for directly connected computers, which must be connected through a common physical layer medium. Now, the notion of layered abstractions 
achieved by the above five layers of protocols result from the fact that each protocol layer manages and abstracts mechanisms and phenomena at its own layer to relieve and isolate higher protocol layers from these lower level details. That way, one can relatively easily move a device, telephone or computer, from one place to another, connect it to other devices or install new applications on it by merely adding or substituting one protocol at the affected layer without having to reconfigure everything. Explaining why there are five layers of protocols and what each of those layers achieves is one thing. Now we also need to look at how these protocol layers are implemented inside computers. If and when two computers can communicate directly over a common wire or wireless medium, each one needs to implement all five protocols. They both need to be connected by a common cable or physical medium. They both need to agree on a common direct link communication protocol. They both need a minimal network protocol telling them that they do not need to compute any path through any network because they're directly connected. And they both need a transport protocol between their communicating applications. And finally, they need at least one such common application protocol. Conceptually, that is from a logical standpoint, the implementation of each of the five protocol layers on each of the machines communicates directly with the implementation of its peer protocol at the same layer on the other machine. From a practical or physical standpoint, there is, however, only one real physical connection between the two machines, and that one is a cable or a wireless link at the physical layer. Therefore, the logical communication that we have just mentioned between peer protocol implementations actually happens over that single physical layer, which relays over its own protocol all the communications between the higher layer peer protocols. In practice, two communicating computers are only rarely connected directly to one another. More typically, they're separated by a whole computer network, including a multiplicity of switching nodes called routers. In this more general case, all intermediate routers, such as the one shown here on this slide, must implement the lower three protocol layers to be able to communicate with its immediate neighbors. In fact, all routers and communicating computers need to implement a common network layer protocol. However, at the physical and link layer, any of these devices need to agree on common protocols only with its immediate adjacent neighbors. It is thus possible, and in fact common, that routers implement different sets of physical and link protocols on their connections with different neighbors. A router in a private home or office will in fact typically implement a local area network protocol on the home or office side, while it will implement so-called ADSL or cable TV protocols on its network provider side interface.